Good afternoon, everyone. Ready to start? Yeah. Good afternoon. I'll turn this to my turn it up. All I mean is that. Yeah. Yeah. Can everyone hear me? Good evening. I'm going to nod there, Sandra, but I can't hear you. <laughs> you hear me okay then? Yeah, I think my iPad has been on update. Yeah, the... Try again, Sandra. My iPad's on blink, it's been on all day. <laughs> I've, I've, I've got you there now. Got me, great. Excellent. Right, I'm, I'm going to make the start. I've got the uh, three students here as well, so... Uh, Sandra, would you mind praying for us, please? Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to learn some more about you and your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you're about to do in us and through us. Teach us your way, Lord God, and help us to put it into practice. We just thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Right, can I just check who I've actually got with me in terms of students, because uh, the, the numbers never seem to collate with the register that I've got. I've obviously got Sandra there, I've got uh, Lee, I've got Kira, and I've got Dave. Have I got anyone else that I can't see on the screen? Uh, oh. lost Chrissy. Yeah. Lost Chrissy, right, okay. Right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get going because uh, you know you've been here a long day today. <laughs> no, keep going. Right, uh, just want to remind you of the syllabus because next month is uh, you're going to do the work, not me. I'll say next month our next class. So in January, it, I'd like to remind you uh, we've, we've been doing some book of Psalms. We did Joe for August, September. Psalms is October, November, and January. And if, if you remember, I asked you, it's on your syllabus, you're going to do a presentation on a psalm or some psalms. I'm not bothered how many you do, what you do, but you're going to do a presentation. I did go through it quite a bit last time, but just to remind you, a 10-minute illustrated talk. It can be, you can use art drama, you can do, you can do PowerPoint, you can do whatever you want. But somehow you're going to present some feelings, good or bad, or mix or whatever, about a psalm or a group of psalms. And within that group, there might be three different psalms. You might say, I love this psalm on a morning, I love this one on, you know, on a night, night whatever. I'm, I'm not too bothered, but I'm after seeing how you use your creativity and, you know, get your feelings across. And I know it's not always... Uh, perfect being on Skype, but, you know, in, in this day and age, it, it's really, it's about you passing on your, your feelings, yeah. Everyone got any questions about that? Did you say it was for 10 minutes? Yeah, it's for 10 minutes. Up to, we'll say up to 10 minutes, though. Best querying the 10 minute thing. Um, I'm not going to time you, but we all know the difference between 10 seconds and 10 minutes. I'd rather, I'd rather be closer to the, to the 10 minutes and the 10 seconds. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. My favourite Psalms 123, Lost My Shame Dear Men. There you go. I want a bit more than that. So, be, you know, do it the way you want to do it. And it I'm not saying it to intimidate you. I know you've just come out of a teacher training class. I used to, I used to teach that class, so I know what it's all about. Uh, I'm not after you being a teacher in this one. I'm after you just sharing a little bit about what scriptures mean to you. 
Yeah, and you can present that any way you want. If you don't want to talk, you might want to you might want to do a PowerPoint and send it to us. Can we do in a group? No, it's an individual. Oh, it's an individual right. thing. Uh, Lee's just asking if he can do it in a group. I'm saying it's an individual thing. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to do that individually if you can. Right. Okay. Let's get on to today's uh, lesson then. Last time I gave you some handouts on uh, on Psalms, and we, look, we looked at groups, looked at various uh, different things. Uh, if you remember, we, we looked at uh, how some people linked between the uh, the Pentateuch, first five books of the Bible, and the Psalms, and how it had a structure to it. We looked at different authors in the Psalms. We, we looked at uh, looked at the idea of should the Psalms pronounce judgment? You know, this idea of uh, you know the, the Psalms. You know about the enemies of David and how God will, you know, bring His might against them and all that sort of thing. I gave you some handouts. Talking, I give one handout that went through different themes and things uh, of, of every psalm there, and uh, we, we sort of we sort of finished. I think I gave this handout last time. I just want to go back to it a little bit to link in with today. So I'm looking at a handout. I think it was off last time saying questions and answers from the life of David. Don't worry if you haven't got it. But I, I just want to go through some things of David. And, you know, let's have a little bit of time of reflection, just us, yeah? So forget about David. Think about yourself here and your circumstances and how you're feeling. End of the day and you've got me as your last lesson before you go home. All of that, yeah? Or, you know, I don't quite know what's going on in your life, what things you're facing, but here, here are some of the questions and answers that David had. So question number one, have you all, have you got this handout or not? I think, I think it was in last month, not this month. Probably, Kieran. If not, I'll need to get it to you. Right, so here's your first question. Uh, can you put your hand up if you've ever asked this question? Or words to this effect. Is anyone in charge up there? Have you ever asked that question? Is anyone in charge of my life? Years ago, when I was not Years ago, before you were Christian, then, yeah. yeah. And there's an answer there. One Samuel sixteen. We'll not read it now. But question number two: Are my battles God's battles? And there's an answer there. Please feel free to interject if you want to say anything. No need to give any comment, ask any questions. Question number three from a life of David. What makes a good friend? And there's an answer in there on Samuel 20. Here's a good question, one of, one of my favourites. Revenge or reconciliation? Certainly a man who had to face up to that question. Do I get revenge? When, when Saul's trying to hunt me down. Do I get revenge or do I look to reconcile? Number five, who was David's God? Question number six, can I create peace? Can I, can you create peace? Number seven, do I try to play God? Number eight, should I fear God? Number nine, who plans my life? Number 10, do my sins matter to God? <laughs> Number 11, does confession have healing power? Please feel free to jump in if you want to say anything. Number 12, where is God when my world caves in? Number 13, where is God when I fall apart? Number 14, what happens when ladies stumble? Number 15, how do God's servants die? And number 16, what was David's philosophy of life? Any questions or comments about that? Please do. I think the bit about vengeance is mine. <laughs> Thank <laughs> the Lord. You know when someone does things to you, not that I want to get back at them, but I'm just saying, goodness me, you know, God will repay that. Yeah, that sort of idea of, well, yeah. I know I shouldn't say vengeance, but it would be nice if God did it for us. Yeah. Yeah. You almost like feel scared for them doing something to you. Yeah. 
It's an interesting one, that one, isn't it? Revenge or reconciliation? Confession. Which one, then? Confession. Does confession have healing power? Does confession have healing power? Let Lee, Lee's just bringing that one up. I think it gives you more peace of mind. Clear in if you get to the non-conscious. Can I just ask, can you hear Lee from there? Not clearly. Not clearly. Go on, then, just speak up. Confession. Keep your face in mind and keep it and give it a clear head. Well, you you might get it out of your system and it's gone, sort of thing. Yeah, you hear that one? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that idea of getting something out of your system, yeah. But interesting, isn't it? You know, to think that, that David, you know, everyone, when people talk about a good Christian, they often bring up David, don't they? David does before the Lord, David wasn't afraid of worship. You know, David, you know, could have killed his enemy and, you know, said, I'll not just go tonight and all of that. But David had questions, just like we do. But importantly, he had answers as well. So the handout, I believe, was up last time, uh, if not this time, but has got uh, scriptures for you as well. So look, we're having a look a little bit. We, we looked at sort of different groups of the Psalms last time and, and the authors. We're looking a bit more today at David and uh, the people behind the Psalms, really. So, uh, they have standing events in David's reign. He's twice crowned king of Judah and of Israel. He, he captured Jebus, Jerusalem, for his capital city. He brings up the Ark of the Covenant. He desires to build a temple. He faces a family, he faces big family disruptions. I, I don't know whether you know all the ins and outs of David and his family, but would any would any one of you like to just paraphrase David's life just very quickly for us? Don't be shy. Anyone? I think we, we touched on it earlier today when we were talking about um, Samuel. Right. And I mean, just towards the end of David's life, basically, how I mean, his sons were doing this and doing that, and his, I think it was his uncle, his uncle Joab, I think it was, that was sort of involved in stuff. Just craziness towards the end of his life, and it was all his family, wasn't it? And it's, I mean, when you look at something, you know, right from the beginning, you know, the you know, his brothers, he, he's a shepherd and, and he comes to kill Goliath and he and he stands up and all of that. You know, you've got all that sort of family thing at the beginning. And like you say at the end, he's best friends with the king's son. He serves the king with his music, but the king wants to kill him because he's been anointed king to be the next proper king. He has a chance to kill him. And then he, you know, he, he's got that many, he's got different wives and that, and you know, different children, and and one of them, you know, try one tries to rape his uh, stepsister, so the brother steps in. In the week, and I think it was his. Remember his brother when he went to bring when he went to bring cheese or whatever when he killed Goliath. Yeah. I think it's one of the brothers from there or his brother's friend or somebody that actually spoke to this guy um, and said oh tell, tell him to get your sister you know by pretending that you're sick and I just thought oh my gosh it was his family or family friends that was connected as well to that yeah this is what happens in families isn't it you know and, and, and then you know he's having to deal with that but bear in mind the fact that he, you know, he's seen a lady that he that he likes from on a rooftop, and he sends her husband into battle, so he can have that lady, and then you know they have a child, you know that you know Solomon, not so it's complicated, isn't it? But this is what families are like, and what I like about David is the fact that, you know, he, yes, he he might be God's anointed, yeah, he's a man after God's own heart and all of that, but he. He made plenty of mistakes and he had questions, but he also had answers. And more importantly, he knew what to do when he made a mistake. And he knew where to go for his answers. Yeah. Right, so um, in terms of handouts, uh, 
outstanding events from David's reign. There was a handout that just gave us titles, but there's another handout that actually talks through all of those things as well. Could you could you all find that and we'll we'll just talk through that one. Outstanding events in David's reign. But it's the one with the little writing, not the big one. Yeah, you got that? Could be near the beginning. Got that clear? Yeah. Have you all got that one? Yeah. Right. Are you okay if, if you all read a little bit of that out? Is that okay with everyone? Yeah? Sandra, can you start off reading number one for us then? Chrissy, can you do number two, Billy? He was twice crowned king of Judah and Israel. Yeah, if you just read through that one. You've got, that's the one with the title on, but you should have another hand out. That's got a whole... Sorry, he was, it wasn't until after Saul died that David took his rightful place. He had been anointed as a young boy, but had a long and trying wait. At first, he was only crowned as king of Judah, because Saul did have a surviving son, Isibeth. <laughs> yeah, David willingly yeah. kept waiting. Abner, cousin of Saul, who had put a Uthasheth on the throne got fed up with Abithash because he rebuked him for immorality. Abner joined forces with David. David's commander, Joab, was upset and killed Abner. Abishaseth, whatever, became weak and fearful as well as the people. Two of his own captains slew him. Finally, all Israel realized that David was their own flesh. David was the victorious captain during Saul's reign. David was ordained of the Lord. David should be king of all Israel. And the lesson, am I reading all of it? Yeah, yeah just pray that. Yeah. And the lesson, one of David's greatest characteristics was that he would not touch one of his greatest characteristics was that he would not touch God's anointed, even when he justifiably could have killed Saul. Also, he was kind to Saul's family, even after Saul's death. Right, thank you for that, Sandra. So, uh, the lesson there, you know, great characteristics, he wouldn't yeah. touch God's anointed. Could have, and some would say should have, mm. but even though this man was trying to kill him, and he, he had the anointing, you know, being the next king, he didn't want to you know, to kill God's anointed at that time. Thank you for that. Chrissy, can you do number two, please? Captured Jabus, Jerusalem, and made it his capital city. Joshua had not captured the city, so it was up to David to capture it from the Jebusites. It had a natural defense and was strategically and beautifully located. The Jebusites thought it couldn't be captured and jeered. David did capture it with God's help and approval. Lesson, ungodly people may laugh at our weakness, but with God's help, we are victorious. Thank you for that. Anyone got any comments about these events so far? Questions? Okay, Beth, can you do number three, please? Nice and loud for the camera here. Roll the off, just as David wanted in early faith and Jerusalem. We also wanted to place the Jordan to wear. The ark had been in the form of Abinna, is it? Yeah, don't, don't worry about names. 20 years after being brought back from the Philistines. Lesson David did the right thing, but the wrong way. Ark was always to be carried on the shoulders of men, but David made a cart. When the way got rough, the ark rocked. We were there, put out, put and with his hand to steady the ark and die on the spot. David was faithful and stopped procession. For three months the ark went to Orbe, Dunn's house, who enjoyed great blessings with it there. Yeah, just a little bit on the other side there. David then realised his mistake and did it the right way. The priests bore it on their shoulders as God had commanded. Describe, yeah. decide to build a temple. Yeah, we'll, we'll, thank you, Beth, for that. I like that one, you know. It, 
I, I like that part of the lesson there where it says David did the right thing but the wrong way. How many times have we done the right thing but, but done it in the wrong attitude? Yeah. You know, for, you know, that's why I like David, he made mistakes like me, you know. Uh, okay, uh, Lee, can you do number four for us, please? Nice to Desire to build the temple. David desired to build the temple, but because he was not of war, God did not allow it. He said his soul should build it. Listen, David did not get jealous and rebellious to deal with the group and make all of her nation. They surrendered and so they supplied with all the land for victory. You know, in, in, in this world sometimes we're told, you know, go out and, and do what you can and, uh, you know, don't let anyone stop you. But there might be times where God says, look, I don't want you to do that. I want you to prepare it. You know, we think scripturally, it's, it, it, and I can't remember exactly, so forgive us, but, you know, it says something like, uh, you know, Paul Water to Paulus. You know, different people do different things, but sometimes we try to do it all, don't we? But sometimes God wants one to do the water and one to, one to do the uh, reaping of the crop, one to do the... We've all got our part to play. But some people, myself included, sometimes try to do it all. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any, any questions about that one? Any comments? Right, Kira, can you do number five, please? Is Family destruction. Sins of the parents are passed to the third and fourth generation. Tell the story of Absalom. David felt that Absalom had wronged him only because he had been wronged in the first place being a spoiled child. Unpunished sin always becomes an uncontrollable giant letter. Now, you know, the, the story of Absalom, we, we touched on him. Absalom is a son who his daughter gets raped by the stepbrother and he steps in but then he goes too far and, and, and gets revenge. I can't remember whether he kills him or not, does he? I think he kills him. But, but basically he goes from there to then set up a rebellion against David. He, he, you know, he goes on to set up to take men with him and to be against David. And what happens is one of David's men goes after him and basically Absalom's riding away, you know, on his horse through the trees and he, his head gets caught up in the trees and, you know, he, his head comes off after that sort of thing, you know. But it, isn't it interesting that when David finds out about it... He didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. It, it, in fact, he, he's more upset with the people that bring him the message about his son. And it, but his son rebelled against him. And you know what? I never used to understand it. Now I've got three children of my own. You know, I've got a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a four-year-old. And, and, and quite honestly, sometimes you can't blame yourself for the behaviour of your children. And you start to say, and you make excuses, oh, they're only doing that because I was a bad parent. You know, that was a bad, you know. And years ago, I remember there was a guy who was a minister in the church here. We, our, our first pastor at, uh, at Bonnie, he, he committed don't we, in that, you know. Um, Funny enough, he, his daughter was singing down at the uh, down in Sunday Town Centre the other day. <laughs> that was interesting. He'd gone, and, and we had uh, three ladies step up. They, they were always sort of youth leaders and that, and uh, one of them is now our current pastor. I was just a young lad, I was only 18 when it happened. I, I was away at university. Um, but out of these three men, one of them, one of them was really quiet, he was more like the treasurer type. Then the other two, one was a youth leader and one was a little bit older. That's now Pastor Thompson. Mm. Yeah. But the other one was a youth leader and these men had a big influence on us and used to encourage us a lot, you know, right to us when I was away come and visit and that. Pastor Thompson and this other man. This other man's no longer with us. He became a social worker. Now Pastor Thompson became a social worker a little bit later. This man did it before him. What happened when he became a social worker? I remember he was taking us away on trips and things. And um, some of his philosophies start to change. Some of his ideas. Hey, I remember him um, in Sunderland where we live, it was it probably still is, but was one of the biggest areas for car crime. 
and uh, as, a, as a social worker, it was working with some of the lads who would uh, stole some cars. And there was one lad who stole a car and uh, had a chase with the police and died. And this man, who had been a you know, prominent uh, Christian here, came in very upset and he was praying for this child. And I'm not saying he shouldn't have, but he was blaming everyone. He was blaming the police and everyone when he came in because this child had, because this young lad had, had gone. What, what are your viewpoints on that, on what I'm saying? What do you think? It goes around, comes around, doesn't it? We don't. We... And he never goes around, comes around. Yeah. The th he, th this man who was a Christian, I understand him praying for the book, but it, what he was saying was, it wasn't this boy's fault, it was the police's fault. Yet as a young and impressionable teenager, I was saying, but surely he shouldn't have stole the car, and then the trees yeah. wouldn't have been pl placing him. And it's... We can be like that with our children. I know I've, I've went a little bit round the, you know, you know yeah. round and circle a little bit there. But sometimes as a parent, I'm like, oh, my child's done that because I didn't do that. It's my fault. My child did that because I did that. The only, and, and I always quote myself, you know, in, when I'm speaking, I often say, you know, there's a famous saying that says, what you do with moderation, your children will do in excess. So, if I see, you know, if I see one of my children stomping a little bit because they're in a bad mood, I think, oh, maybe it's my fault because they saw me stomping a little bit, now they're doing it more. But then you blame yourself, don't you? Yeah. And then yeah. if your child swears, does that mean they swear because you swear? Mm -hmm. And in the end, you kind of blame yourself for everything because you're not the only influence on your child's life. And then the other thing is, Surely there comes a time where even children have to be responsible for their own actions. And, and this was it with David, you know, this family thing. He felt that Absalom had wronged him only because he let him get spoiled. But in the end, we all have to be accountable whether we're a child or not. We're all, you know, we're a child of the king, but we're still accountable. So it's an interesting one that the whole family, and I know, you know Sandra's already touched on it quite a bit there. The whole family thing with David is a, you know, <laughs> of a mess. His, his son, his son that asked for, um, that asked for David's, you know the woman, um, Abishag? Yeah. She was meant to keep David warm, wasn't she? Yeah. When, when, he, when he, like, he was, before, just before he died. <laughs> He was riding around with like 50 horsemen, you know, acting like I'm all this. But he was the one that then wanted to be king or, or asked for Abishag when David had died. So even just before he died, he did nothing about Abishag acting like he's all king before he actually wanted to take this woman. <laughs> so again, David didn't say anything. He just like left him to it. And then yeah. that happened after he died. And Solomon had to then kill his own nephew yeah it, it, you know it, David this is what I like about David you know he, he had weaknesses you know and, and yeah. fact, certainly one of them wasn't it yeah it's right, gonna, bit, uh, go on Sandra no no I'm just saying it's really interesting yeah the family dynamics just really stood out for me reading it but, uh, and this is why we're looking at David today because you know the Psalms often you read the Psalms you think it's beautiful poetry you know but Behind those psalms, behind the idea of there being a structure, which I brought in last time, a structure to actually take into the into the service. Beyond that, you've got you've got writers. David wasn't the only writer, but he was one of the major writers. You've got a story of the man behind the writing. Yeah. When he talked about the Lord being his shepherd, it wasn't just a fancy little phrase that he'd come across. He he lived it. He felt it. When he talks about you know repent, when he talks about bringing vengeance on his enemies, when he talks about this or that, he's been through those feelings, he's, he's dealt with things, he's got problems like I have, like you have, you know, he, he, he's got things, he's got issues in his life, you know. Right, I'll, I'll read number six here, and, and uh, this is an interesting one, this one. David's sins. 
So you've, you've got the whole thing about Bathsheba. He says, you know, he's on the rooftop, he looks across, he sees a beautiful woman there, bathing on top, you know, naked, desires her, decides to send that husband to the front of the army, so he, you know, uh, just nicely, you know, very conveniently gets killed and all that. But, you know, but God sees that and, and, and sends, uh, sends a prophet and that to deal with it. Now, what I like about David here is that often we can see the fault in others, but not in ourselves. But the difference between Saul, the king before him, and David is that David repented yes. and wanted to get right with God. But Saul and some other people didn't or don't. And in God's mercy, the second child of David, Bathsheba, was Solomon, who then is allowed to build the temple. But like Sandra said, there's complications with the other family that he'd had before. And you've got to remember, you know, that David was, was told, you know, don't, don't go with other uh, religions, with other groups, because of, you know, things that are complicated. And, and it does, you know. And, and what happens is, that's the first big sin that we hear about. The second sin is when he numbers the children of Israel. He's been told not to number them. Now you might say, what's the problem of counting everybody? That's not a problem. God just said not to. <laughs> but God has said not to. You know, and, and I get this with my children, you know, often you tell them something and they don't understand why. But I just want them to do what I say because I might have a bit of wisdom and I might, you know, and I, I, I mean, don't repeat this one, especially the people from Sunderland here, but I, I was in the car the other day and um, I'd, I'd pop out and put something in the house and I'd left the two older ones in the car. And uh, my daughter came running out to tell us that my son had uh, lifted the handbrake. Now, now when I got in, I, you know, luckily I leave the car in gear, and he hadn't moved the gears. But I had to try and explain to him. Now, why am I, why am I saying that? You know, with my first initial, you know, what my first initial reaction was. Tell us, how, how would you deal with that? What, what? And we'll, we'll think about David. What's your first reaction? You get out of the car and leave him. You get the devil get angry. What, what were you saying there, Sandra? Why did you get out of the car and leave him? Yeah, that, that's the first thing went through my head. I blame myself. Why did I leave? And I thought, hold on. He lifted the handbrake. He's done something wrong. And I explained to him, you know, and, and I sort of got in and turned the engine off and rolled the car back a little bit just to show them and then took them out to show them the neighbour's car because he had a dent in his car where someone else who lived in our bank had uh, visited a friend and left the car of Hanbrain and rolled in the neighbour's car and said, that could have happened to our car while you were in it. Yeah. So I went through all of that. And, but my first initial reaction was to blame myself for leaving them. And I thought, hold on, I should be able to leave a nine-year-old and eight-year-old just for a second. I mean, I didn't leave the engine on either. I turned the car up. But we do, we sort of blame ourselves, don't we? It, you know, and... But there are, there are times where we just need to do things and just because, or, or not do things because we've been told not to. And what happens is, you know, when, when David numbers the children of Israel according to God's will and command, that we see there God's demand for explicit obedience. And, and many suffer for the sin of one sometimes. And there's, uh, there's three possible punishments here seven years of famine fleeing from an enemy for three months and three days of pestilence. And I've got here, leaders have an awesome responsibility and have to answer to God for many. There have been times where as a leader I've had to say some things to people and they couldn't say why. And some people follow you, some don't. There's been times sometimes where, you know, my pastors asked me to do something and I couldn't say the wisdom of it until later. Sometimes years later, you know. See, in all of this, you, you've got, behind the writings of Psalms, you've got real people. Right, it, it, we've got a little bit of time left. Um, let's it, grab a pen. You're going to fill in the gaps in uh, one of the handouts that I've given you. Even though I've probably given you the one with the answer.